Hi, right, thanks for checking out one of our videos here on our channel. We've got um, about 650, I don't know, give or take videos on YouTube uh, as of June, July of 2021. So if you're watching this in the future, probably have a bunch more by now. Um, but anyway, this is our information right there. Fencerfixer.com is our website. And there's our address. But we work on all brands and ages of these things. We also work in cattle scales and little bars and EID equipment for True Test and Gallagher. And CattleScaleRepair.com is a website for that. But anyway, this is a uh, older unit they don't make anymore. It's the Gallagher MX5000. They also made an MX2500 that was very similar. Except I think it had a green colored case. And um, I think the internals were similar on the inside. Um, so, but this is one that we just fixed for a guy, a uh, local guy that's about a, an hour away from us. Uh, uh, brought it over to us to work on. It's a 220, 240 volt unit. Uh, they're sort of making this model, from what I can tell, if I can remember, from probably the early 90s all the way to like 2000, maybe 2002, 2004, somewhere in that range. So it probably had a 10, 15, probably, probably close to 15 year run. Uh, a lot of the parts are discontinued for it, but um, the main, the big boards in it are where most of the problems come from. Uh, it's a pretty fancy unit on the inside. Um, the um, can't get main boards for it anymore, but I can get capacitors for it. I can retrofit transformers into it. I can do some work to certain parts of the board. And there's uh, one, two, there's four circuit boards inside this. Technically three, but there's really four if you separate them all out. But this is also an adaptive output or adaptive control unit. So adjust its joules output based on the fence condition. So um, Gallagher's been doing that adaptive control stuff since the 80s. So a long time. A lot of brands don't do it. But, um, and that's why some of those have problems. And, um... But Gallagher's been doing it for a long time on the large units, and they start to last like five, six, seven years on their mid-range as well. Um, so basically, this unit will out will change its joule output, joule you know, uh, energy, shock energy, based on what it feels hooked up to. Now this, and it will change every click or the site, the screen right here cycles. Every time it clicks, it goes to another setting. And this has uh, this tells you your joules. It's a 48 stored joule unit. Um, it, it goes through uh, joules, output voltage, fence voltage, uh, fence or ground voltage. It goes the cycle between four or five um, things every time it clicks. It shows a different number with a uh, different signal or symbol on there. So we'll zoom into that so you can kind of see it. Let's see if we can get that centered over there so you can see what it does. Part of the LCD has got this black crap on there. It's been hit by something. But you can't get the boards much. You can't fix that. But um, to change that LCD out or whatever or the whole board. But the um, um, but most of the numbers are still legible. So it's powered on. So there's Kate. That first one. Um, see that there's jewels. There's a... Um, it's going too darn fast but it's uh, 13 joules what it sets at all the time if there's no if it's wide open and nothing loading it down but uh see it's five point it's about six thousand volts on the ground because it's not grounded it's just sitting there open or no nothing hooked up to it so it's, it's the ground's very high right now because uh, it's not grounded to a ground rod um it's putting out about between eight and nine uh kv output so about 9,000 volts. Now what we'll do is we'll, um, I'm going to grab a, I've got a big high wattage um, resistor, it's a 200 watt, 50 ohm resistor, pretty heavy load. And this will max out, whoops. This will max out the, um, almost max out the joules on it. 
Um, I think it peaks out at 48 joules. But every time it comes back around to the J for the joules, it should go up a little bit more every time it every time it pulses and it comes around to the joules. It might be 15 joules or 30 joules. It, it, I don't know, but it'll climb up a little bit every time it comes back around. So I'm going to short it out. That test. like 19 joules 20 joules 26 joules 33 joules 41 41 so if it's a dead short uh, it would go all the way up to 48, but it wasn't dead short. It was 50 ohms, dead short of zero ohms. But you see it just right back down to 13 joules because the load's not on it anymore. So that's kind of a nice thing. You can see exactly how things are performing based on what kind of numbers you're getting. And there's all kinds of alarms on here for output alarm, uh, fence alarm. Uh, it'll say OA and everything else. Um, or earth alarm. There's different parameters that you can set on this board. So let's turn it off and pull the case apart. Pretty um, sophisticated unit for fence charger. A lot of a lot of chips and surface mount product on there. Parts on there. And another big board down here that does you now all the I'm going to take it out of there because it's a pain to get in and out. But there are all the parts on the front side. Oh, it does have this. I forgot about it. It had this, does have this board right here. This long skinny board plugs in here. That is uh, your remote control board. Like an antenna, basically. There's your four capacitors. Like we changed out two of them. The other two were fine. And we did some work to this board as well. But the main board's working fine. There's your output board. That there's um, all the power comes off of here goes through a little hole comes over here and plugs in this stuff and then um, you got two transformers on here underneath um, it only uses power from one transformer and then usually one or two capacitors all the time now as soon as it feels that it ramps itself up and needs a little bit more firepower it will pull in more capacitors and pull in that second transformer to shock the fence harder uh, but as soon as it detects that it's um, not as stressed out and uh, the jewels will fall back down and may only use you know one transformer and one or two capacitors again so pretty slick unit we don't get these in very often when they come in they're kind of a treat to work on if you can get them going they can't always be fixed because if this board really has any kind of software problem or glitches out um, you can't get these main boards you can't get the top board or the bottom board they were separate parts at one time and then you're able to buy 10 years ago you could buy both boards as a kit basically um, but they don't make they don't sell that board they don't make that board so you can't get these boards anymore you can't get any of the boards you can't even get the transformers for them really i mean i guess you could i think they got a transform that, that they make for 220 volt versions but it's uh, really hard to come by and i don't even know the part number is for it they don't go bad that often so but we usually retrofit our own transformers into these things. That's what we do. Um, a little easier to, to do and save some money on the customer from buying a new unit. Capacitors we can still get all day long for these things. Um, and this bottom board underneath here. On there, on the front side of the board, that's where all the like old school electronic component stuff is, like the big capacitors and resistors and some timing devices and trigger devices you can you can get those parts but you got to know what they are and you, you got to know where to find them you know did you key on online web electronic websites but some of these chips and stuff you can't get the program by gallagher and they don't make them anymore so that's the downside of those it has all these dip switches here and i don't have the book in front of me but i've got it saved on my computer these dip switches do different things a lot of them are for there's two of the i think it's i don't remember what switches it is but two of the switches are for the remote control this is able to use the old school gallagher remote that had was just a light that flashed and just a remote control only 
um, but all the other switches have a lot to do with these parameters for these uh, alarms for earth alarm, fence alarm, uh, uh, error messages, output alarm, all the different alarms. The switches have different switches do different things. So there's different levels of of um, within each of those alarms with different parameters in there. You can have it go off at X amount of voltage or this voltage or that voltage depending on what your system is. Everybody's system is a little different. Now the new ones that Gallagher's got out, it's got a digital display controller and you can do all that stuff digitally and it just punches it into the unit and it's done. This one you had to go in there manually push a switch to what you wanted <laughs> basically. So, but um, pretty hot unit, man. These things are really well made. Uh, they didn't sell a ton of them because, you know, it's a 220 volt to start with. And it's 48 joule stored. So it takes a pretty good amount of fence for somebody to want to have this size of unit. But uh, if you've got an old Gallagher MX5000 and wants to try to work on for you, we'll be happy to try. You know, they're kind of expensive to buy new, so it's worth a shot to try to fix the old one if we can. Sometimes we strike out. We only get maybe one or two every couple of years we'll get one in. It's not very common. Um, I would say about 50% um, of the time we can t fix it, and the other 50% of the time we can't. So sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Well, hopefully you like this kind of stuff. If you got an old fence chart that needs to be worked on, any brand, any style, look us up. Be happy to help you out and take a look at it for you. But until next time, we'll see you guys later on and have a good rest of your day.